So uh, starting the recording. Um, again, we're we're doing pretty good for signups. Um, we have we're skipping next Friday, and then the following Friday, uh, Kunte Kim is signed up to present. He's not here, so I'll make sure he's still planning to do that. Um, and yeah, we're signed up into January, so we should be good. Uh, so I guess since I don't have to push for that, uh, without further ado, Floris, let's learn about data tidying. Hey, okay, thank you, John. <laughs> um, all right, um, I've reworked uh, the slides. Um, so data tidying, the learning ob objectives uh, for today, um, it is uh, getting to know how to classify data sets as tidy or non-tidy. Um, and pivot the data if necessary to make them tidy uh, and recognize the reasons uh, for yeah, creating or using non-tidy data, what is this all about. Um, and um, I've dug a bit also in a vignette of tidy R, which is uh, used a lot in this chapter. All right, so what is this about? Um, tidy data. It is a format, as a form, how data are arranged in a data frame. And uh, especially um, there is the important distinction between the variables, the observations, and the values. And the variables must always be the columns. The observations must be the rows. And the values must be the cells. Um, so at the left side here, we have things which we uh, regard as meaning, meaningful uh, subjects. Uh, at the right side here, columns, rows, cells, that are the places where we want to put this. Um, so this is really important because the notion of variable, it is not always uh, that easy uh, to know what we mean by that. Uh, why would we arrange data uh, in the tidy way? It is because mm. uh, the tidyverse packages uh, are designed to work with tidy data. Um, so if you organize your data in this way, uh, it will be much easier uh, to use functions from uh, the tidyverse and uh, to focus on your questions at hand. Um, Another reason is that variables in columns allow um, to, to um, take advantage of our um, vectorized nature because uh, a data frame is a list of vectors. So um, you can take advantage of that. So let's look at several formats uh, yeah. which a data frame can have. For example, here we have, uh, if I, um, remember correctly it was about tuberculosis and number of cases and also the size of the total population in two years so here we have three countries uh, the number of cases in 1999 and 2000 and also the population size uh, size in uh, both years all right it's, it's organized like this and uh, with four columns that contain the data or at least the, the, the counts. Um, another format is this one. It's uh, It has a column country, column year, column with cases, column with the population size. All right. Um, and yet another representa representation is uh, a longer format. It has country uh, and year, but you see them repeated also the years here uh, because cases and population are in the same column, um, the names eh, of, or of these uh, two types. So it is called type. And uh, the last column has the number, it is count. So all these are so to speak, valid ways to represent these data. They are they have the same data, but the question is which example data frame was tidy? Um, I guess having read the chapter, this should not be too difficult, but somebody may or can speak up or uh, post it. But was it the first, the second or the third one?
I don't want to speak up, but I don't. It sounds like no one wants to go. And you made it confusing because you numbered them zero, one, and two, and then you asked yeah, us the first, second, right. and third. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Taylor, I was going to say, if you flash back through them, I can get it. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a no. Let's uh, yeah. have another table zero, <laughs> like this. Table one, like this. Table two. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be one, right? You mean table one? This one? Yes, yeah, it's correct. <laughs> um, so, indeed, uh, this is the tidy uh, format, and um, so this is because these columns are the actual variables that are represented in this data frame. So you have cases is a totally different variable than population. Um, also, um, in the, when you look at table zero, yeah, cases 1999, yeah, this is a variable. This is all about the same thing, but, um, you you mix two things in the column header. So in the column name, you have something about year. So this is uh, not tidy. And so this is the tidy format. And we we want to get that uh, if we have another format at hand. So that is a, uh, about the challenge of uh, today. Um, so most real data is not tidy. and. This has its reasons. It is because uh, often this was made with another goal in mind. So it can be because of the nicer presentation, for example, in a table, in a report, or uh, some uh, article you, you want to present it in a wider format. Um, but often for analysis purposes, you need to tidy these uh, data. And to begin with, uh, you have to find out which are the actual underlying variables and observations. Uh, and then in the next step, you have to pivot uh, the data into a tidy form. Uh, as I said already, it, it uh, can be difficult to define what the variable is uh, because you need some context. So you have to understand what it is about um, to understand what is a variable. If you have, for example, two columns named measurement one, and measurement two, well, this could be replicates of the same variable. And then it's not really uh, two, two different variables, but when these would refer to different methods or different states um, of the subject that are measured, this might uh, well be a different variable. So it all depends also on the context. And if you miss this context, um, it's fine to well, define them yourselves um, in a way that is most convenient for your analysis. So it's not always um, as obvious um, as in the example. Okay, now to go from untidy data to tidy data, uh, you can get two different scenarios mostly. Um, the most common scenario is the data is that data are too wide, um, which means that values of some variable, remember the years, which we saw in the column names, uh, 1999 and 2000, that they have ended up in column names. So the values have ended up in column names, and then you have to make the data longer. You have to pivot those values into their own column. Um, so, this is uh, the example, a bit more simplified with just the cases and, and where you see that actually in column two and three, you have two variables included. You have the, the names of the columns contain the variable year, while the cells um, represent the values of the variable cases. So you want it uh, in a longer format. Another scenario is uh, that um, that, uh, that the table is too long, but it's not that common. And it means that uh, several variables, their names are um, present in one column. We have seen that in table two, 
uh, where um, cases and populations, those names were uh, beneath uh, each other. Um, so these names of different variables exist as cells in the same column, uh, while the values of those variables are next to it in another column. You can have that, for example, in databases. Um, it is common to find that um, in such um, circumstances. And then you need to tidy it uh, for usage in uh, the tidyverse by making data wider. So you pivot the column with the variable names into several columns um, with the appropriate um, column names. So it is it can at times be quite confusing. I'm switching all the time between column names, variables, values, cells. So I've tried to, yeah, make this more or less clear in um, further slides, as we will see. Uh, here we have still, um, yeah, the, the the example or the the format that I was uh, talking about it which is too long with uh, case and population and then next to them their value in uh, another column so when you have uh, data that are too wide which is which is the most common case you have to use pivot longer to make it longer um, to make too long data wider you have to use pivot wider um, these are the only uh, important functions um, that are discussed in this chapter. So it's also um, important to understand them well in uh, using the tidyverse. So we'll focus um, on the relationship between both because you can you can uh, yeah, loop around actually when you, you uh, use pivot longer uh, to make uh, the longer format, you can recreate the wide format which you started with uh, using pivot wider. So we will uh, do that as well. Um, and we consider different situations um, and that was referring to the number of variables, for example. So um, we'll see in a minute. Um, regarding the most important arguments used in both functions, um, there is an argument always that has the string names, and there is an argument that has the string values in it. They are not entirely the same arguments in pivot longer and pivot wider, but the argument which has names in it always refers to the variable of which the values uh, are used for the column names in the white table. Um, so this is really always linked to um, well, it's about names in the white table. Um, the same holds for values. It is referring to another variable whose values generate the cells in the white table. So you must understand that in the white table, you don't have those names of that variable one and the variable two. You will have to um, yeah, give them a name. Um, because it is their values that are in the column names of the white table or in the cells of the white table in the case of the values variable. So we have a names variable and a values variable. So and the what you provide as a value to the arguments um, in the case of the names and the case of the values, it is the name of the corresponding variable in the long table because yeah, if you go from white to long, you have to really, um, invent the name, uh, so to so to say. Uh, in the other case, you will have them from the long table. This is, of course, very theoretical, but this also a general framework which will work in the in the rest of the this presentation. Um, but we will rehearse it in, in each situation. Okay. So, the most common. Um, situation is this one. It's the most often encountered uh, situation. And this one, uh, you really get to know it uh, because you use it quite often. And I'll zoom in a little. Um, it is where you have one names variable and one values variable. So um, in these schemes, I uh, always put the long format at the left and the wide format at the right. So we have, we have, 
we have pivot longer at uh, in the and the arrow that goes from the white to the long table it is because you want to make the white table long um and the pivot wider is for the other uh, way around so what I'm using here is um, the, the the name the, the, the names variable replicates uh, and the values variable blood pressure. So what we there is quite a lot of noise um, from somebody. Perhaps we have to pause a little. I think uh, John just said in the text message that he is going to. Uh, Go into the user account and just mute that person ah, okay. and I'll be right back. Yeah. I'll wait a little because it is uh, a bit too loud for the moment. Yeah, I usually keep uh, my data sets initially for processing in like super long format um, for like most of my function stuff. I don't know why. I think I just like preferred for me because when I'm doing those like functions like either uh, you have an L apply where you're trying to filter certain data sets to process that subpopulation. It just seems really easy to keep the long format for that, right? So, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, that's worked. For, um, the count. Thank you. Um, so, Let's first uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the nature of these two uh, tables. So what we have here um, in the long format, we have three patients, A, B, and C. Uh, each patient um, is represented with three measurements of the blood pressure. So we have uh, a replicate variable that represents uh, which replicate we are uh, looking at, replicate one, two, or three, and then each time the blood pressure measurement. So obviously this is the tidy form for this um, uh, type of data frame. Um, the wild representation, um, you, have, you see that the names replicate and the names blood pressure are absent from this uh, table. This is very important to understand. And so the, the variable names are typically present here in the tidy uh, form. Um, so, when going, uh, so in the white format, you have the values of the names variable, rep one, two, and three, and you have the values from the values variable in the cells. Um, okay, let's have a look at chat. Um, yeah, the NA values, indeed, uh, there can be NA values, but we will, uh, that will indeed uh, come up in a minute. So just have some patience uh, and let's try to understand this uh, really well. We have uh, the names variable, which um, once more um, generates uh, these columns uh, and the values variable, which generates the values in the cells. So these are both values of a different variable, uh, which is represented here in the long format. All right. So the names argument is represented here. In the case of pivot longer, we use names two because we go to the long format uh, and we effectively um, uh, give it um, the name of that names variable, which is only present in the long format. In the case of pivot wider, we give it uh, the names from argument because uh, we are going uh, or starting from the long format and go to the white uh, format. Um, the same um, the same approach holds for the values variable. We we name it blood pressure when we go to um, the long format with values two. We give it. Uh, we say okay, the values variable is called blood pressure. We define it here. So the way we define it, we have to put it uh, between quotes because of course uh, we cannot refer to it as a um, existing variable when we start from the white uh, format. When we uh, start from um, the long format, we can refer indeed to the name of the existing values variable. So this is uh, how this works. So when we apply this in an example, um, starting here with the white format that we have seen already with uh, the names variable year and the values variable cases, which is in these six uh, cells. 
So what we do say is uh, names to year values to cases. Okay. What I forgot to mention here is the calls equal to in case we go um, from wide to long and there's no clue um, otherwise than specifying it explicitly uh, for pivot longer to know about which columns you're speaking because there is no reference uh, to an existing variable. Um, so that's what's meant here with calls equal to it is really um, applicable to pivot longer. In the case of pivot wider, it is immediately clear which columns have to be pivoted because you can refer them as existing uh, variables. All right. Um, so we use um, a negative definition here. We do, do um, exclamation mark country um, to say that we need the other two columns. Um, so the result here, table tidy, is what we effectively want. Uh, let's um, create a white table from the long one. Well, okay, we say uh, pivot wider. Um, we want the names variable um, to be year so that its values will generate the column names. And we want the values variable to be cases so that these values will fill the cells. So there we are again. Um, so there are some other situations coming up uh, ahead and uh, we will do the same each time, uh, looping around to see how this works. So of course, um, at, if anyone has a question at this moment, uh, please speak up. Because it will uh, get just more, only more complicated in the next situations. But the one that we have had was the one that you will encounter most often. But pivot wider and longer are uh, quite powerful, though, so they can do uh, even a lot more. It all depends on how messy, so to say, your original data uh, are, especially um, the column names of it, what they uh, really, how they are built up. So in this case, um, we have multiple names variables and one still only one values variable. So what's here, let's just look at the tables again. Um, it's, it's quite a simple example here. So we have, we still have the same data. In fact, um, only instead of replicates, uh, I have chosen to, um, to, to call it methods and to give two attributes, a name of the method and the number of the method. So it's just X is one, Y is two, Z is three. Um, it could have been more complex. Uh, it could, for example, have been uh, one method name and a replicate per method. Then the X and Y and Z would also be recycled each uh, three times. This would still work and still be uh, part of this situation. Um, in any case, uh, the clue is that the column names here are composed of both values each time. So we have um, X underscore one, in this case, Y underscore two, Z underscore three, but it could even be uh, X underscore one, X underscore two, X underscore three, Y underscore one, two, and so forth. Um, and what we have to do now is, okay, this is still quite similar to the previous situation, but we want those two values of the two names variables to be separated when we start from the white table and go to the longer table. So um, the essential difference is here because uh, pivot longer and pivot wider need to have two names variables. So pivot longer, um, you have to say, okay, it's method name and it's method number. Well, that will not be enough, not be enough uh, because there's a specific format used here. Uh, but at least you have to say it. And those are the two resulting um, variable names. Um, and uh, likewise for the uh, other direction in pivot to wider. Uh, for the values variable, everything stays the same. But um, we have an extra argument that we need to uh, separate uh, in the case of wider to longer. Um, to separate those two column names, uh, or in the case of longer to either, to glue them together in a specific way. 
Um, you can just use, um, if it is like this, uh, the names set argument, which is underscore here. Um, that will work for both uh, functions. Um, in pivot longer, you can also provide a regex with groups, which will then define the name, the, the, the um, names variables. Uh, the regex will um, can be more complex, of course. Um, and in pivot wider, um, you can also make some more complex uh, construction because um, with the aid of uh, the glue syntax, um, which is specific here to the names glue argument. So here you can take the method name and method number and put them between curly braces. All right. Um, John uh, is um, regulating making some schedules for the future. Yeah, Topics, sorry to distract uh, you in the chat. It's OK. <laughs> it's OK. It's very efficient of you. <laughs> in, in the meantime, I, I'm really appreciating all the oh, yeah. diagramming you did here. It's <laughs> like the way I learn it super helps. OK, thank you. Yeah, I can uh, add that I needed it myself. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Uh, because well, the book chapter the book chapter was not all too involved, but uh, when you are reading then the vignette uh, of pivoting entirely R, it becomes more and more complex, and then uh, at a certain moment you you need something like this. All right, so yeah, perhaps this could even be some idea for cheat sheets or whatever. But uh, well, um, <laughs> that's up to someone else to do the layout so to speak um okay let's uh, zoom out a little um for the example so i'm not sure exactly what this all represents uh, it, it's somewhere from uh, the vignettes that i recycled it um here we have a white format uh, clearly um 2018a 2018b and then also A and B for 2019 and 2020, with just one row. Um, what we see is there are two variables represented in the column names of this white format. So there's a year and there's a yeah type. It's A or B on the one hand, and there is yeah one values variable. It's uh, with a percentage. So we can pivot longer. We need all columns. We can uh, refer to that with uh, everything. That's a function. Um, so in, in often you also have columns which you do not do not want to pivot, which are not part of this game. But sometimes uh, they are all in this game, and then you use everything. Um, we have two variables, year and type. As I said already, we they are constructed um, by by gluing them together with an underscore and the values are the variable percentage. This is the values variable. Um, so the result is what we like. It is the tidy format, year, type, and percentage in this way. Let's try to go the other way around. Um, we say we can do pivot wider. Um, now the names variables, it's year and type. We want them separated with underscore and the values variable is percentage. So it's very symmetric with a pivot longer. Oh. Um, and then we have the same um, the same result again. All right, time for an intermezzo. Um, <laughs> because situations stack up, get more difficult. And of course, um, the question that was already posted in the chat uh, was a very pertinent one uh, with relation to missing values. Um, all right, let's have a look at an example that comes out of, I don't remember, uh, either the book or the vignette, but it's about uh, songs that are um, that get a billboard rank um, in several weeks. So the table looks like this. We have each row is a song. It is a, it has the attributes, artist, track, and also the date that it has been entered in the door that it entered this ranking. And then we have the rank numbers as values here. Um, each song has a rank 
uh, for each consecutive week. So, and there's many, many weeks. So we have up to uh, week 42 and there is still uh, more RC. So um, obviously we have a wide format and we have a names variable week uh, and the values variable uh, rank. So it's quite straightforward. What we do is pivot longer. Oh yeah, the calls we want to pivot, they all start with WK. So with the starts with help, uh, we can uh, just select them like this. This is so helpful. Um, okay, the name variable is weak, the values variable is rank. And yeah, we have the tidy format. Okay, uh, 24,000 uh, rows, it's, it's quite a lot uh, compared to uh, what did we have? 317 uh, to start with. <laughs> um, and what do we see when we um, go a bit to the right? But why can't I? Uh, of course, it's because it's the tidy format. We could see it here. Um, if you go a little to the right, um, you see that there are quite a lot of NAs, missing values in uh, this uh, data frame. And so we can see them pop up here as well. Well, maybe, could depend on the case at hand, but maybe we are not interested to have them as observations, uh, these missing observations, actually. Um, so in that case, you can say to pivot longer, oh no, we don't want this uh, to be kept. Uh, of course, you cannot exclude them here in the right format because you have all combinations by nature of this table, but in the long table, yeah, you might not uh, want those uh, as an observation. In this case, um, we can use the values drop in a uh, argument in pivot longer. So when we say values drop in a is true, we all of a sudden we only have uh, 5,307 uh, rows left, which is uh, in this case much more convenient to work with, probably. Um, all right, there's more to say about this. Um, Another case is um, that we have a table like this, day and the value for each day that is in the table. And day is a factor variable. Um, and its levels contain all the levels uh, that you can have for a weekday, for, for days uh, anyway. Um, and suppose that you want a white table including missing values for the absent factor level. So you, you not, do not want just to do pivot uh, wide with only these days, but you also want, yeah, the missing values uh, and show that there are missing values for the other days. You can do this, but not in the regular, the usual way. This will just uh, uh, give us what we would expect from pivot wider, um, but you can, do this uh, by using named expand. It is uh, made specifically for factors. And when you do named expand is true, it will add the missing values for that um, for that factor. Um, all right. There's another one here. Um, how to deal with missing values. Um, you remember still this example with the percentages uh, that were there for a year and type. Uh, for, and each combination was present in this uh, table. And when we make it white, it is like this. Um, but you could also start with this table, uh, percentages, which does not have the zeros uh, and hence also not all combinations of year and type. Uh, so we want to make it white, but also add uh, zeros and not NAs, as we would have with just using names expand, for example. So, of course, this will not uh, do what we want. This is just pivot wider. Um, we have to use names expand is true, but also add values fill is zero. Values fill, it will replace the missing values with the value that is provided here. So here we say uh, the missing values replace them with the zero. So then we can indeed create this white table. So far we had uh, one names variable and one values variable, and also the situation of multiple names variables and one uh, values variable, and some tricks uh, with uh, missing uh, values. Uh, <clears throat> 
Okay. Um, all right, yes, factors will be indeed uh, handled in uh, later chapters with, with much ma many more um, helpful tools, I expect. And there is, um, John, I think, has posted um, another interesting, let's, let's jump to that one. I'm very curious. All right. So, John, speak up. Uh, scroll down a little bit and click that uh, play button. Up. Oh, up. Ah, here. Yeah. So yeah. Got, yep. So, this is an animated version of your graphic, okay. basically. Great. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yes. And we, we have it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very useful. Yeah, it can, you know, it's definitely helpful to see them yes, yes, where yes, they yes, go. Yes. And uh, if you ever see spread and gather, they're the old version of pivot longer yes. and pivot or pivot wider and pivot longer. Uh, those are also covered here. So if you ever need okay. to like read some old code, uh, that will help there too. I'm so this thankful really nice. there, was, there was an intermediate period of like eight years where there was cast, decast. <laughs> I think there was something else before spread and gather, mm. but then they tried to rework with spread and gather, and then now we have pivot wide and pivot longer, now, and it's just so much easier. Yeah, it was funny because a lot of people who were used to spread and gather were like really upset about the new functions. It's like I just spread and gather are still there and yeah. will always be there. There's nothing to be upset about. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I was just I just figured them out like yeah. intuitively in my head when we switched over. So when, yeah. the like the names I I picked up on pretty fast, but uh, the arguments I could never remember what was what. And like it's really helpful here to really just drill into that. There's always names and values, and then is it to or from is really all that's changing. And so just unifying those names or those argument names makes it. You know, that was the whole idea is <laughs> to make it easier to remember because there's less unique pieces of information to remember. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, John. All right. Um, There's two more uh, situations that are um, considered, uh, both in the book and in the vignettes. Um, and that is that the values variables name can also be included in the column names of the white table. And uh, that can be one values variable, but also multiple values uh, variables. And actually, that is the last um, situation that is handled in the book chapter. So, but we will start with uh, uh, perhaps a more simple one with um, the values, just one uh, values variable, as we had um, always up to here. Um, so the values variables name is included in the white tables column names. It's a mouthful. Um, but let's, oops, that's not good. Um, let's have a look uh, to these two uh, tables. So we have in the long format um, the three patients. We have a method name, X, Y, Z, and we have blood pressure. So that is, yeah, just a very simple uh, case. But the difference is now in the column names of the wide table, where we have similar as in situation two, two parts, but instead of that being two um, va um, names variables, uh, now you have just one um, names variable and one values variable, the, the names of these. So in essence, we have, well, sorry, I have to rephrase. We have the values of the names variable, x, y, and z, as we are used to in the case of uh, the y table. But we have it's not, of course, not values of variable values variable because those are in the cells. But we also have the name of the values variable in the column added. It's each time the same because we just have one values variable. So we still have what we are used to in the right um, format x, y, and z values of the names variable. But we also have the name of the values variable just repeated because, of course, one could understand this because otherwise it's nowhere present in this table 
what this variable here is. So, well, let's add it. Someone may have uh, thought um, with underscore blood pressure. Um, all right. So, because the values variables name is present here, we don't have to when we go from right to long to um, yeah to to define it. We can just extract it, uh, and we can do that with the names too. We can provide a special string dot value in names too, and then it will know. Ah, okay, you're not just providing the name as we are used to with names to of a names variable, but you're also providing uh how to extract uh, the name of the values variable so this is enough so pivot longer will then know okay um there's both the values of a method of of um, a new variable that i have to create which is called method name and then the cells or um represent the values of uh, a variable that is which name is already present in the columns of the white table of course, you still have to provide how this uh, is constructed. So in a pivot longer, you can use uh, name step or names pattern, as we had seen. And for going back, uh, you still have to say, OK, it's just names from and values from, as we were used to when starting from this long format. But uh, to add that the column names are um, a bit more specific, you have to use the names glue. Uh, arguments and say, okay, uh, the first part you use the value of the names variable method name. For the second part, uh, yeah, just use the, the variable name of the values variable. So this, it, that's a symmetry between here and there um, in the case of pivot wider. So this gets clearly more confusing than we had already before, but if you think enough about it and look at this enough, it is, I think, quite the most uh, logic way to deal with it. All right, uh, don't uh, forget, we always have to use calls uh, when using pivot longer to, to um, represent the columns that have to be pivoted. Okay, let's uh, have a look at an example. Um, we go back to this one, but uh, instead of just having 1999 here and 2000 in the column um, names in the white table, we have you added cases. So because uh, cases is actually the, the values variable represented here in the cells. Okay, let's um, extract this. We say, okay, these are the two columns that we want to pivot. Uh, so everything um, except country. The names variables, um, well, the names to argument contains um, the name of the values variable, which we represent here um, with, a, with a link actually to this part, which is cases. Um, and also we define the second part as, okay, that's the names variable uh, here. You see, there is no values to here anymore because we don't need it, because the values to, um, the values to um, value uh, is already defined by adding this here in the names to, because it will be cases. And you say it is uh, with the names set, it is with the underscore. So we, we get what we want. And yeah, it is just the same as we have had in an, in an earlier um, example already, uh, where we were not using uh, the cases um, prefix. Let's recreate a white table. OK. Um, let's have a look. So we have country, year, and cases. OK, so we take the year names from year. We take the values from cases. That's what we are used to. But we have to add that. Uh, the column names here are, uh, have a special name. So we have to use the values variable name uh, as a prefix. So that's what we are saying here. So it's not difficult either, but it can be hard to find out the most um, efficient way how to do this. But this is, I think, uh, quite clear with the example. Um, what we have now is just an extension um relative to the previous one 
because we now will work, it's the first time that we see this. Uh, it is with two values, variables. And in this case, you even need to have in the Y table some um, some referral to that situation in the column names, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to figure out uh, which uh, of these cells refers to one values variable and which of these cells, the green ones in this case, refer to another values variable. So let's uh, start with the format uh, to begin with. So we have three patients, uh, per patient, two replicates, and each time there is a measurement for variable X and a measurement for variable Y. Um, when you want to represent this in the Y format, okay, we have for each patient, it's one and two. These are indeed what we are used to with names variables, the values that are used and pivoted in the column um, names. But we have this both for X, both for Y. So that makes immediately clear that this format really needs the names of the values variable in the column names. So X underscore Y underscore. Um, in the previous example, this was rather optional, so to speak, because you just only had one uh, values variable. So again, we can uh, say, all right, uh, these are the columns in pivot longer and the first part is the values variable. The second part is uh, the names uh, variable, which we define to be replicates. Uh, you see two colors here because uh, value indeed will be split out into two resulting values variables because it sees, all right, the first part is here X and then we have Y. So we cannot uh, join that into uh, one single column. So that will not need extra things here. So even while you have um, several values variables, you, you it is sufficient to just repeat, okay, that's, it's just value because it is rather how the name is constructed rather than how many values variables you have. Um, the same for the other way around. When you go from long to wide, you can just use values from uh, and add C. Uh, so the, the vector X, Y to represent uh, you have to, to say that you are using two values variables and then we'll know, okay, I have to construct it uh, in some way. You always need to provide a helper to define the construction. Again, as in the previous uh, cases with name set, names pattern or uh, names glue, depending on uh, the function that you are using. So this is rather a small extension um, compared to the previous situation, but still, um, it is uh, important to be aware of. It is also the case that was used in the book. Uh, so we're showing that here. We have the household um, data frame with column family. Family is just an ID column. And then um, date of birth of child one, date of birth of child two, the name of child one and the name of child two. So what do we have here? We see a variable child, obviously, which two values, uh, which are child one and child two. So this is clearly the names variable, which will go in a single column child with values child one and child two. What we have here are values variables names. So date of birth and name. So this we have to say to pivot longer. Um, we also see a missing value, by the way. And we drop them, as you can see here. So in pivot longer, we, we exclude family. We say, OK, the names of the white table are constructed beginning with the values variable. And then uh, we define the second part as being the child variable for the long table. And these are separated with an underscore. It will immediately see by itself, OK, we have two values variables, so it will um separate them in uh, the way that you want so this is the tidy format of course um when we want to go the other way around then we say okay uh, we have the names variable child but we have two values variables uh, notably dob and name and you have to glue them together like this so it's easy and difficult at the same time <laughs> 
it's short and very efficient, but you have to get your head around this. As, uh, and then you have back uh, what we had in the first place. So, I, oh, yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, well, what I find super useful, especially when it comes to more variables that you're pivoting, is you can like pivot long and then you can use a summarize statement. You can group by those, summarize like median interquartile, then you can pivot Y, then you can put it into GT, and it makes a really pretty table that you can use for publications and stuff. Absolutely. And like the bread and butter of kind of why I use pivot long and pivot wide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can indeed use them in a very creative way to to summarize, to aggregate values, to really do it for the presentation. So this is an important reason why you would be using pivot wide, um, even if it and and you would why you would create untidy uh, versions of the same of a tidy data frame, for example. So. Um, there are no specific examples about that anymore, um, but um, there is more, a uh, few small things in the book chapter and especially in the vignettes. And it is already uh, what Donald said uh, for a uh, part. So uh, with pivot wider and pivot longer, you can do more things. You can, for example, um, also define name prefixes. Um, for the white table column names uh, with, uh, with the names prefix argument. You can also drop some of the, the non-pivoted columns in pivot wider by, um, remember in pivot wider, we don't have to specify um, that because we just um, um, make it wider and keep all columns, in fact, all other columns, but you can also drop them by just adding um, ID calls uh, arguments and select those non-pivoted columns that you want to keep. Uh, you will only keep those and then the other ones will be dropped that are not pivoted. And um, you can generate rows with whole rows with missing values in pivot wider uh, using the ID expand arguments, uh, which, which will also relate to factor levels, if I'm not mistaken. You can aggregate values, of course, um, I said already, but there are you do not always need to do it in a separate uh, summarized statements starting from the uh, long table format. You can use it as an, do it as an argument inside pivot wider. So instead of, um, if you wouldn't do that in those cases, you would then get uh, list columns with in the cells, multiple values uh, contained as a list. And to, to, um, to avoid that, you have to summarize those, uh, of course, and you, have, and you have to aggregate them. Um, you can, as Donald said, you can combine uh, pivot longer, pivot wider to, to uh, cater for more complex situations. Um, and um, finally, you can also, uh, instead of providing the names to or from and values to or from variables, uh, arguments, um, you can construct a single specification data frame. Uh, it's, I will not go into that. It is explained in the vignettes. It's not in the book, um, but it is a data frame that defines the relationship between uh, yeah, everything that we have been talking about. So the relationship between the column names in the white and the, the names variable in the long table and uh, the same for the cells for the values variable. So it will, Defining a strict um, format how these these things um, work and the same specification data frame can be used by pivot wider and pivot longer, but then you have to use a somewhat derived uh, format of the function because of course this needs other another argument. Uh, it is the pivot longer spec and pivot wider spec. So there's there's even more, but um, I think these are the most notable. Uh, extras that you can find, um, uh, especially in the vignette. So that's it. Um, but so you're free to uh, add more comments or questions. Well, one thing I've always run into when pivoting from wide to long is sometimes um, you get this warning that, oh, you have like a nested array 
cell or something like that because you have some type of duplicate when you pivot wide to pivot long. And it's always been something that's always taken a little bit of troubleshooting every single time I've done it. I, I know we're not at the point in this class where we talk about um, like that type of stuff, like nested arrays and stuff. But if you have any tips or tricks for that, I would be ecstatic to hear it. Yeah, I think uh, we are going to see um, those subjects in late chapters. Um, there are handy functions to deal with that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, something that's also pivot wider can handle already with one of its arguments, uh, which it allows to, I think it was, uh, yeah, the, the values underscore FN um, argument, I don't know if it's in the, in the chat. It's um, a summarizing function that you can provide to this argument. And in that case, um, multiple values will be combined, combined for a resulting row by column combination um even though if it's the situation is more complex then yeah you have to prepare uh, stuff beforehand of course and if you do not summarize list columns will indeed emerge and then you can have warnings i uh, i guess yeah great thank you All right, that was really great. Um, thank you for diving into the vignettes to expand things. That was really useful. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have anything else? If not, I will see uh, everybody over in the, uh, the Slack and I'll see everyone in two weeks. <laughs>